Hey guys, how's it going? So I don't know if you noticed that small obelisk on the mound right outside of the gates of the old West Virginia penitentiary there, but I'll touch on that in a second. And it's very interesting the way that ties into the previous video I just made. But uh, regarding this video, it's really strange. The other day I was thinking about all of this Tartarian architecture that we find and you know, where we find it. And I was thinking about that and how we usually find it around government offices or education, universities, uh, the medical industry, <clears throat> even the sports and entertainment uh, industry. I actually call these the pyramids of power. And I'll touch on that again later. But I just wanted to explain the two points I would like to make in this video. Um, number one, I would just like to introduce the fact that prisons in America basically contain the best evidence for the false historical narrative, the Tartarian architecture. I mean, they are full-on castles and forts and just amazing architecture with the same old stories, built in the 1800s, either destroyed due to fire or torn down or just used until they built a better prison, a more modern prison. So. I would like to introduce that, number one, and then number two, I would like to discuss that mound, which is outside of the West Virginia prison, make some connections to my previous video, and then number three, I just have a quick logic exercise about the, um, the controllers of this world. So uh, just to get started, <laughs> the other day when I was thinking about this, again, where these, this architecture shows up, and I was thinking, what about prisons? Because in Pittsburgh, where I'm from, we have, um, we have the the Allegheny County Jail, the old historical jail right downtown Pittsburgh. I believe they filmed one of the Batmans there. Uh, so I, that's when I started looking into it, and I had no idea the extent of the prison system, the old prison system in the United States. And if you get a chance, I highly recommend you just look up the, um, the history of prisons in the U.S. in Wikipedia. If you read through the history of the prisons in the U.S. with the knowledge of the ancient architecture of the lost history. It really shines a light on our current situation, how we got here, what we are. And <laughs> I wasn't aware of how accurate the statement was that I used to make about the fact that we are prisoners of war, basically. We are all prisoners. So anyways, uh, just to get started here in, um, in Pennsylvania. So you can find these everywhere, every city, every state, every country you will find jails that are beautiful Tartarian architecture. And I was going through just, I started in PA and a few other states, and it's just amazing the architecture of these old jails in even small towns. And I found this website here, it has these forgotten, these nine forgotten prisons in Pennsylvania it will send chills down your spine. And that's the other big thing about this is that these prisons come with a story. They love to have some kind of haunted story, ghost story, or conspiracy about how they were testing radiation or biological weapons on prisoners. Every prison, if it has ornate architecture, will have some crazy story behind it. And obviously the point of that story or that conspiracy theory made up about it is to divert your attention. So instead of saying, hey, the emperor has no clothes, and looking at that architecture and saying, when did you build this? Why did you build it so ornate? And how many prisoners did you have running around your town in the 1800s that would necessitate such a gigantic project, such a gigantic engineering feat? Uh, but anyway, so here in Pennsylvania, number one, you have the old jail museum. Carbon County Jail, again, ancient architecture there, you can see that. And I just want to quickly go through these because, like I said, there's just too much information. I would just mainly like to introduce the information to you. And number two is the Eastern State Penitentiary. This thing is crazy. When you see it from above, it's just amazing. And Philadelphia has like four sites where they have gigantic jails like this. 
And again, what is wrong with Pennsylvania? We have so many prisoners. What, what were we back in the day? We were just all a bunch of crazy people, I guess, going around killing people and stealing. I mean, we needed gigantic castles like this. So this was Al Capone's first prison. Again, you get the story, the crazy story. And then number three is the old Allegheny Jail that I mentioned. That's in downtown Pittsburgh. Beautiful, but still ridiculous. I mean, what would ever drive people to build such ornate jails? You got the little walkway over there to the courthouse. And of course, these were not originally a courthouse or a jail. I'm sure they were castles, and they look like most of these were forts of some sort. Uh, moving on, you have number four, the old jail in Chambersburg. Doesn't look too crazy, but still the same sort of architecture. Number five, you have Smithport, um, old Smith. It's a museum now. Uh, number six, Bradford County Jail Museum. I mean, look at that thing. It's a mini castle, and it's Bradford County. It is not even a gigantic metropolis, but they needed an ornate jail, apparently. 1844. Like I said, all these jails are built in the 1800s. It's just really ridiculous. Uh, number seven, you have the old Cumberland County Prison. Very nice architecture. Number eight, and this is the other big one in Philadelphia, the Holmesburg Prison. This thing has so many stories about it, so many legends. It's ghost stories and um, prisoner testing. But look at it from the air. This is insane. I mean, I don't know what to even say about it. It's so ridiculous looking. You don't build this kind of prison for prisoners that are just coming, for settlers that are just coming to a new nation that's barely a nation, and you're putting them all in jail. You need a prison this big to handle the few settlers that come here looking for to establish a, a life. I mean, it just doesn't make, the whole narrative doesn't make any sense. The history is ridiculous. But what, I think what you're looking at is our Ellis Island. I mean, this probably is how we all entered the United States, through a prison that looks something like this, this um, Holmesburg prison, a gigantic processing facility. It was probably more of a processing facility than it was an um, actual prison. I mean, look at all the prisons in Philadelphia. That tiny little area, you have five prisons or correction, correctional facilities. Wow, I'm staying away from Philadelphia. <laughs> But um, yeah, so and look at the um, look at the generic staircases they build to the roof or to one of the um, lookout towers. Obviously, it was not built for that purpose. If you have to slap some generic metal railing, you know, gangplank up to the top, or you know, some cheesy, you know, MacGyver solution to something. So I don't know. I'm just not buying it. It's ridiculous. And look at the inside. This is not what I would build if I were trying to, if, I mean, how much money did they have? I'm almost speechless. So it's a good thing I don't have a script for this video because it's too ridiculous. I mean, look at that ceiling. That whole complex is just ridiculous. That's the Holmesburg complex. It is what it is, guys. So um, moving on, number nine, you have the York County prison. You know, I don't know what the heck that was. It's funny, there's a grade school like right next to this prison. So, you know. I don't know what that's about. Um, here's a picture of the Pittsburgh Jail Courthouse. Some interesting stuff there. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. You guys got to tell me what you think. Prisons just seem to be the most ornate architecture I've ever seen. They are gigantic forts still intact. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Same old story. Burnt down or torn down. Um, but what I think is I think that karma's a bitch and... If you bring us into this matrix reality in from prison, well, like I said, karma's a bitch. That's all I got to say. Uh, so moving on, because there's so much to get to today, um, what was I going to talk about? And um, now I would just like to discuss this mound that is outside of um, the West Virginia prison. So you can see how close it is to the prison. To me, it looks more like this was the... Perhaps, again, this is conjecture, but it was probably the power center for that whole fort. You know, if you notice, it's a mound. It's the conical mound, like the ones I described here in Florida and Georgia. And if you notice, it still has that spiral-looking staircase going up to it. You know, they kept that spiral design. And I don't know what that's about, but it's interesting that it appears also on old conical mounds down south here. 
but also, <laughs> I know it's strange, but in my last video, that, that movie, that generic sci-fi movie where they have the, the ones on Venus with the iron-looking spiral going up it with oil coming up from the center of it. So, yeah, I don't know what that's about, but it is very interesting. And you can see the obelisk on the top. Most likely that obelisk was not there. It was probably laying beside this mound in one of the configurations, like I said, from my last video, where you have the, the rectangular um, rectangle of power, as I call it, with the conical mound on one end, a square mound on the other end, and then in the middle you have the obelisk with two smaller obelisks next to it. So exactly what that's for, I have no idea. The funny thing is, is that layout seems to be the same in every single city worldwide. So that just makes me think it was some kind of power generation or something else that, that would be of use or necessity. So again, I don't know what that's about, but it's very interesting. And then this, um, this old photo too shows the structure still in the top, on the top of that um, mound in Moundsville, West Virginia. So who knows what that's about. Um, so again, I apologize for not having a script for this video and rambling because that's what I do. But um, I would just like to discuss one other quick thing about this and that would be a quick logical exercise on the current use and current ownership of all of this architecture, all of these sites, uh, this Tartarian architecture. And my point is that what we are finding is that there is something, there's a lost history. The evidence is architecture. I mean, people you know, cite mud floods and this and that, but it's basically architecture, current architecture that we find throughout the world that is being used for a different purpose. We are given a purpose, but it's not necessarily the correct purpose. And so my point is, we don't know who built it or when it was built or why it was built or how it was used, but what we do know is we know who currently owns and possesses these sites. So from that fact, we know who owns it, who controls it now, we can derive some logical conclusions. And number one, regardless of who built it, either the people that own it and use it now are the ones that built it and they just decided to either repurpose it or after the reset they decided to go on to a new matrix, a new direction, and so they created the stories, destroyed all the evidence they could, and they just continue on the same old thing. Reset, run through the course of operations, reset. So that would be the current owners being responsible for the building and use. Or if it was built by somebody else, logically that is, where did they go? Either they somehow disappeared and the current, you know, we're left with the current controllers again, or the current controllers defeated them somehow and took it over. So that would logically tell us that they are more powerful than the people who built this architecture or who created it. So either way, it all points to the people who are currently owning and using this, these sites and this architecture. And from that, you look at, okay, well, who actually does own these sites and these architecture? Who uses this? And it goes back to the same old, what I call pyramids of power. I know this is a lot and it's kind of rambling, but, but bear with me, it is, it is what it is. We have government is the biggest owner and controller, and that includes the military and every other branch of government. Education, the universities, schools, whatever. The sports and entertainment complex, which would be Disney and things of that nature. The medical industrial complex. So these are the pyramids of power on the earth that are using the Tartarian architecture. So you see where this is going. Regardless of who built it, when it was built, or how it was built, the fact remains that this architecture, these sites, this energy is being used to again still control the earth through these pyramids of power, which I just listed. You know, government, education, sports and entertainment, medical industry, there's, there's probably a few more. I can't really think of them right now, but you see what I'm saying. And, and it is what it is. That's, that's where we stand now. How we got here exactly, I don't know. You know, it just, it is very... What I can say is that um, another thing I was thinking about the other night when I thought about looking into prisons was there is something that's been bugging me for a while, and that is the fact of the corporate personhood. Um, um, I've been kicking this topic around for a long time. I believe even back when I was 
you know, heavy into the matrix, into the whole, um, the legal aspect of it. But I don't agree with corporate personhood. Basically what that means is that we have, we create these entities, they're corporate entities. A corporation is a person under the law. Unfortunately, it is not actually a person. It's not a physical person. You cannot put a corporation in jail. And my thinking was that perhaps the, um, the creator of the earth, the heavens and earth, is not happy with us creating what we call life through corporations. And perhaps it's, it's karma that's coming around to bite us in the butt where we are, being, we are basically slaves to corporations because we create corporations. We create the life of corporations and now we are kind of reaping that destruction, that slavery that comes along with that. So I don't know, that's probably, probably a whacked out theory, but it is what it is. But the fact does remain, we are being controlled by pyramids of power and these pyramids of power are all corporations. They exist on the earth here, government, education, sports and entertainment, medical industry. I'm sure there's more, that's all I can think of right now. But um, yeah, so like I said, I just wanted to get this out there because there is so much information that I'm sure everybody can just pick through and, and discover new things. But the fact remains that prisons are an amazing example of lost architecture, lost history, false narrative, and... And just the whole prison system in general, if you read the history, it's kind of a, a sadistic way of life. It's a very negative, dystopian way to live, especially when you <laughs> private prisons, for-profit prisons. I mean, we are messed up. We need to get control of our reality, folks. We need to put things into perspective. We need to prioritize. We need to wake up. Um, like I said, this is not good. Uh, so, anyways, tell me what you think. Again, sorry for the rambling video. I did my best in a short amount of time here. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching, and take care. Adios.